Hi, I'm Jens. I'm a video and digital content creator. Hi everyone, I'm Jess. I'm a videographer as well as a yoga instructor and a huge ocean lover. Hi, I'm Gabriel. I'm a motion designer, producer and all-around creative. Hi, I'm Dr. Therese and I'm a licensed clinical psychologist. Hi, I'm Ben. I'm a video creator and an editor. Hi, my name is Julian Thomas and I work for a company called Unbabble here. And we've all joined forces and collaborated together to give you these suggestions on how to keep positive-minded, healthy, productive and creative in this challenging period, especially that we're spending a lot of time at home these days. So, here are 23 ways to cope with self-isolation. Let's face it, most of us will be working from home and a lot of businesses around the world are being faced with uncertainty right now. And therefore, especially for freelancers, creatives and small business entrepreneurs, we are faced with some challenges too. However, there is no point in wondering what's going to happen. Now is perhaps the perfect time to work on those personal projects that's been on your pipeline. Whether that's creating or editing a video, or planning for your next screenplay or your next novel, or perhaps just simply as working on your personal portfolio and even creating that blueprint of your future dream home. Now is the time to create. The act of creation is a force of life and is excellent in keeping us all productive in times like this. Any kind of an exercise is very good for your body right now as we are locked down inside. Yoga is an exercise which is not only for your body, it's also exercise for your mind and soul and all of those three factors are coming together as you're exercising yoga. I truly recommend you to roll up your mat and move your body even though it will be only five minutes or ten minutes just move your body and enjoy the stretch. There's a tons of YouTube videos where you can see different yoga classes and of course if you have a local yoga shala which is offering an online classes support them and do it. One other really important thing to me is making sure that you keep a strong routine. This means that in the morning, have breakfast, make sure you have lunch, dinner at the same times, wake up when you'd wake up like you're getting ready for work, and also change. Make sure that you're wearing the same clothes that you'd wear to work. Uh, today, one of the activities we did to get into the same routine was we made homemade bread. Delicious. A great way to feel better at this time is by cooking and baking. We can take advantage of all the extra time that we have and do all those recipes we've been meaning to do but haven't had a chance to before. And make all the comforting, nourishing foods that make you feel good. My personal favorite, of course, is chocolate chip cookies. Taking time to truly enjoy making a recipe from scratch is such a gift and something that we take for granted. And when I'm in the kitchen cooking, I find that it also feels meditative. It allows me to feel really present in that moment. So enjoy having this time to cook and feed not just yourself, but maybe your loved ones as well. Nutrition is important in any times of our lives, but especially when we are trying to keep our body strong and immune system up, we need certain vitamins and minerals to help our body to do that. Yes, vegetables and fruits are stuffed with vitamins and minerals, so include a lot of them in your diet. Instead, try to avoid any kind of animal products, as animal products, especially milk and eggs, are scientifically proved to increase the inflammation in your body. Certain vitamins or supplements like vitamin C, minerals like zinc and magnesium can help your body to keep that immune system strong. Many of us will be experiencing some downtime and what's better to do than to watch those films we always wanted to see, whether that's the Hollywood golden age or the current blockbuster fair or simply exploring art cinema in general and there's so much wealth that the world cinema has to offer. Personally I tend to go through director's filmographies and watch those I haven't seen, films from great directors such as Fassbinder or Almodovar or Truffaut or Kubrick and including those incredible films from Studio Ghibli, we are incredibly fortunate that despite the confinements of our own home, we can go and escape into the world of films. Read a book. 
If you're like me, you probably don't read too much on a daily basis. So take this opportunity to read something that you genuinely enjoy. For me, that means forgetting self-help or educational books and reading something highly engaging that I won't want to put down. Since we're at home a little more than usual, why not take the time to beautify your space and surroundings? Clean and declutter like a boss. Now you don't have to be Marie Kondo to get the full benefit of having a happier, cleaner, healthier home. All you have to do is start one section at a time. This is the perfect chance to start cleaning through your old belongings and maybe getting rid of stuff that you really don't need to hang on to. It is so important at this time to have a space that you feel comfortable in and a space that you cherish that makes you feel at peace. So take an extra minute or two every day and do something to make your home feel more beautiful. You'll be so glad that you did. For those possessing any skill in the arts, now is the time to practice those skills and refine them. And for those non-creative types, but having the inclinations to draw, sketch or paint, or would simply like to learn, take out those brushes, those coloured pencils, those paints and let your imagination run wild. Draw self-portraits or portraits of your favourite people. Paint landscapes, go surreal, go impressionist. There are no rules really. You don't have to be the next Monet, Bruegel or Picasso, but you'll find it's incredibly therapeutic to be engaging in the act of art. Learn something new. I recommend taking this time to learn something that you felt you never had the time or the mental energy to pick up. Healthy boundaries with the content that you consume is essential. It can be so unhealthy and feel so terrible to be on social media all day and watch the news all day at this time. So be sure to limit it. Be very intentional. Perhaps limit your social media time to just a few minutes a day. Set a timer so that you don't go on longer than you intend to. And the same for news. Maybe just read a couple of articles a day or limit your news to one time during the day only so that you don't get overloaded and stress yourself out. Laugh. It sounds really simple, but humor is vital. Now, for me personally, I love memes. I could spend the whole day looking at them. And the best thing about memes as well is you can share this content with your friends. Share that around, because right now the world needs more laughter and joy. You can also access sites like YouTube. There's plenty of content there, such as, you know, recorded live stand-up, comedy skits or pranks. Also tune into streaming services like Netflix, where you can binge watch that comedy series that all your friends have been talking about. So make sure that you, you know, take a seat on your sofa and relax and enjoy a good laugh because they always say that laughter is the best medicine. During my quarantine, things that I like to do for fun are listening to podcasts. Uh, lately, I've been listening to Kona Needs a Friend. I highly recommend it. Uh, it is, it's got amazing, funny banter. He interviews a ton of really funny people and really intelligent, famous people too. In addition, I would also recommend um, Cautionary Tales. It's one of my favorite ones, but I highly recommend listening to different podcasts. It's an easy way to pass the time. I've always thought that music has had a really powerful and healing property in my life. And I also believe that it is able to really shift your mood. There's a lot of Facebook Lives and Instagram Lives being set up. So for example, you can tune in to see DJ sets from your favorite DJs. If you have a musical talent as well, why not set up your own Facebook Live and share your musical ability with all the people that you love? Seeing in lockdown, all the people who are sharing music and using that gift to really uplift one another. And I think it really shows the power of what music is in our lives. Another thing that I like to do is play games. Um, if you have a friend on Skype or Zoom, you can set up a Zoom call and come over here, check it out. I'm playing a little code names right now. And I just dial in and, ah, looks like they picked my card. Make the effort to stay connected and to reconnect with all your family and friends. We live such crazy busy lives these days with work, activities, and it's really easy to neglect one another and to neglect that communication that's so important. As we really have time to, you know, stop, 
Take that time to really connect with one another. Now more than ever that we need to make sure that we remain as a community. Even if it's a five or 10 minute phone call, it really does mean so much to keep that community going and keep that connection going with all your family and your friends. I think this is the perfect time to connect back to the friends or people that you left behind with not really an easy connection. This is a good time to send them a message, call them, send them an email, telling how you feel, that you want to talk through what you left behind and even say I'm sorry or that I care about you or I miss you or I want to reconnect with you. Just be really vulnerable and open to discuss and really heal the scars that certain relationships left behind. This is vital and perhaps life-saving. Get that sunshine you need as it's our main source of vitamin D. If you have a balcony or a terrace or simply just by sitting in the window, spend around 20 to 30 minutes under the sun several times a week where there's available. Read a book or have a quiet moment under the sun as that bright light affects our mood and stress management. Vitamin D is scientifically proven to strengthen our immune system and we must remember that in our history during the epidemic of the Spanish flu, doctors treated patients outside in full sunlight as the sun deactivates colds and influenza amongst other regressive illnesses. So put it simply, the sun is our friend and it makes us happy. Doing some gardening is a really great activity to undertake in this period because it also allows you to do a physical activity on a regular basis. So it doesn't matter if you have a backyard or a front yard or even just indoor plants in your house or apartment. Allowing yourself to really take care of these plants is a great way to kind of keep your sanity as well. So, you know, whether you're pruning constantly, you're just watering your plants, there's nothing really much more rewarding than seeing it grow and seeing things blossom and also being able to use that produce for your own meals in the end. I love journaling and I do it daily, but I understand it's not for everybody. But maybe we have this thought that journaling needs to be something like writing a poem or writing a story, it needs to make certain sense. But it really doesn't need to. You can just have a flow of words into your notebook. It can be how you feel currently, what you wish from the future, what you're grateful for, what happened today. All just flow of thoughts written down because then you have a safe space to express yourself. My favorite way to feel good at this time is by practicing mindfulness, which is meditation. And if you haven't tried it before, meditation is simply being present in the moment and focusing on your breath. And I know it can seem intimidating, but it's actually very easy. There are tons of apps these days like Headspace and Calm, which offer free trials and teach you everything you need to know about mindfulness. Start out with three or five minutes a day, and science shows that if you can practice mindfulness regularly, you're going to be calm and happier. So give it a shot. What have you got to lose? Take a walk. This may be difficult or anxiety inducing, but being outside is still the safest place to be. And as long as you're not near a heavily populated area, you're fine. Even if you're in a city, find a route and specific time where you know you won't interact with anyone to take your walk and clear your mind. We are fortunate to be alive and it's totally up to us what to do with all the time that we have in our hands. And as much as we would like to be productive and active, we also need to remember that we need our bodies, our mind to rest and recuperate. We are breathing and we are living and that despite of the circumstances, we should be grateful for that. Every morning when we wake up, it is important to remember that life is a gift and times like this remind us to appreciate each other and look after each other and support each other. That despite of the necessary distance, we're not really isolated. We can still reach out to a community out there to create a sense of solidarity and positivity. That gives us hope. 
thank you so much for watching this video and a tremendous thank you to all these incredible people for giving their time being a part of this and shining their light and inspiration to us. We are a community reaching out to yours to help spread kindness, strength and positivity. Stay safe at home and we hope you're staying productive and healthy in body and mind and hopefully this will get you in the mood for life.